Hello, this is MakerJ101, and it's finally time to work on my Sterling engine. So I can so I got all my Sterling engine stuff out, and I'm just starting to figure out what well, pretty much have it designed in my head, but um, kind of drawing down some plans here of how it's going to look. But it's basically going to be designed very similar to the way this one is designed, the way the um, it can be taken apart very easily in like 30 seconds by just removing these bolts and it pops apart. Um, that's how I want to design the next one. Alright, so I copied these plans. Well, actually, I made it a little bit larger um, onto the metal. So now I have to cut it out. I have one shot at doing this because I only have one piece of metal like this. So, um, But I actually made this, this part right here. It's 10.4 on here. I actually made it 11. So this is 11 here. And then the can is um, 6.5 centimeters in diameter. And then this is... Um, about uh, eight and a half centimeters so that should be good they look pretty nice so this one's just gonna have a hole in the top for the displacer rod and then it will have the eight holes for the bolts both of them will have those and then this one will have this whole circle cut out here in the middle and that will be where the displacer can will be soldered on like that so Alright guys, so here are the plates all cut out, and they were actually way easier to cut than I ever expected. Um, the hole, I was planning on actually using a little jig I made up to cut a circle with, I cut it with the, um, with, um, uh, reciprocating saw, or I call it a, um, saber saw. Um, but basically this is the normal, um, guide on it, which was the bolt. Um, but I decided to try and make my own guide out of wood. And basically what I did was I put a hole there, a bunch of holes, and I put a hole in the middle of my um, circle, put a little bolt through it, and it would basically pivot around, or my idea was that it would pivot around and cut a perfect circle. Well, it did sort of cut a perfect circle. Um, these are actually test holes here, but they just weren't the right size, or the blade would start bending out because it wasn't at the right angle or something. So it was just so frustrating. It took me like two hours to try and do this, and... I wasted a bunch of time trying to do that, and then I started cutting this, cutting out the real one after the test holes because I thought I had it all adjusted, and it started cutting out a little bit too far, and then the jig broke. So I just went from there and cut it manually, or manually guided it, and it worked just fine. Why I didn't think to do that in the first place, I guess I just didn't think it was going to be easy to guide, but it was perfectly easy to guide, so, <laughs> so that was a waste of time. But So I've got them all cut out, and they look really nice. They're pretty much perfectly square, so that's good, about the same size. Um, I started to smooth this one out, so I think the next step would probably be to, well, sm finish smoothing them out, and then actually drill holes in the plates. Alright, so I finished polishing it up real nice, and it's real nice and shiny. And I actually um, stuck a um, aluminum strip in here because solder doesn't really stick to aluminum, so I figured that that would be pretty good. So I coiled it up in there to kind of center this on here, so I don't have to constantly try to center it while I'm trying to solder it. Hey guys, so I'm soldering it on right now. So I've already got all this done right here, and I've got a couple tips for you guys, and just showing you how the rest of it's going. Um, don't use rosin core f or rosin flux. It doesn't work too good, so... Um, I tried it, and that's about all the farther I could really go, and it wasn't really sticking at all. It wasn't go flowing into the joint. So, use your old-fashioned um, acid pipe solder. It seems to work a lot better. So, um, And you can just remove it afterwards with acetone or something like that if you're concerned about it rusting or something. Just soap and water should be fine, too. So I'm just using my normal old uh, um, electronic solder. So, so yeah, you just apply some of the flux on there. Got a toothpick to apply it. Just apply some around the joint there. Take your soldering iron. Make sure it's not too corroded up. And just start over here and just kind of work your way around the joint. And it really actually doesn't take all that much solder. And I'm trying to make it as smooth as possible, so... It looks nice, although I'm not really going to see this joint, but still I want it to be strong. So, if it looks shiny, then that means it's strong. I 
I mean, this really does not take long at all. Here it is. The solder joint looks awesome. Nice and smooth. There's just a few spots I'm not sure about, so I'm actually going to pressure test it right now. So I actually put the um, top on there, and I used a like O-ring kind of thing um, to seal it. The O-ring's too big that it, for me to actually use it, but for a test it should work. So I tightened the bolts down, and now I'm just going to dip it in hot water, and the air inside should heat up and expand. Oh, it looks like there's a leak. Right there. But it looks like that O-ring actually seals pretty good. But as you can see right there in the solder joint. No, it's not the solder joint. It's actually between the... It's like the rim part on the can. Hmm. Huh. Well, I guess we'll have to solder it up real good there. Alright, so I polished the top plate all up. So that looks really nice, nice and shiny, and so that should make a good seal. And then I also made the um, displacer rod. So, and here's the little, um, what do you call it, bushing, or the part that slides. That will go in that hole there, and I cut the hole there too. Um, <clears throat> and I also mach I put it in the drill chuck, and machined this little um, indent there, or notch, or whatever you call that. So that, where is it? Oh, I think it fell on the floor. Um, so that this, this is my um, linkage, will, so it'll fit inside of the linkage there because um, I didn't have any wire connector things that were any bigger. So I have to go with these smaller ones and just machined it and it works perfectly. So that should work. Um, and then I also have a slight change of plans with the seal. I'm going to actually go with this um, seal made out of pond liner, which I think it's the same material that um, tire inner tubes are made out of, um, but it's pretty tough stuff, um, and it should work pretty good. I need to do a pressure test to make sure, um, but then this other hole here is actually going to be for the water to go from the lower water jacket to the upper water jacket, which will be on top of here. So, you see, there's going to be another water jacket up here. Um, that will be around the displacer rod and everything. So I need to make up those water jackets still. And I need to drill, in, first before I do that though, I need to drill a hole in here for the, um, and solder in the, the tube that will go up to the, um, to the diaphragm or piston. And I will need to solder this in.